Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on iDRAC. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. This video is going to be focused on iDRAC. Uh, if you're not familiar with iDRAC, that's Dell's remote access uh, controller. Uh, that's basically just how you can remote in if you're not physically at your server, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to identify uh, which type of license you have for your 620, which is going to either be Express or Enterprise. And Enterprise is really what you're going to want to be able to remote in. Uh, then we're going to show you how to upgrade it from uh, Express to Enterprise. And then we're going to show you how to uh, log in via the uh, iDRAC web interface. Let's get rolling. Hey guys, this has been Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade an iDRAC Express license to an Enterprise license. If you don't know what iDRAC is, iDRAC stands for Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller and it's used for local and remote server management. And the iDRAC license you have will define some of the features that you have access to. An Express license is going to be a little bit more limited when compared to an Enterprise license. Uh, for example, Express doesn't allow you to use the virtual console which may be useful for certain situations. This virtual console allows you to use the server when you're not physically there. So if there's an issue with the server and you cannot physically be there, you can use that virtual console so you can remote into the server and do whatever you need to do. Another thing that I would like to note when it comes to an Express license is that you cannot use the dedicated iDRAC port. All of the iDRAC network traffic is going to be shared with the network traffic that's going through the specified NIC port. Once we upgrade to an enterprise license, we'll be able to use that dedicated iDRAC port for anything that's iDRAC related. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to show you is how to identify what iDRAC license you have. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to go ahead and boot up your server. During post, you want to press F2 so we can enter system setup. And once you're in system setup, you want to go to iDRAC settings, and then you want to go ahead and select system summary. And right here, you can see where it says express next to iDRAC license. So this system has an express license. So we want to go ahead and upgrade this express license to an enterprise license. So now what we want to do is we want to gain access to the iDRAC web interface. So this is going to require a, a couple of things. One, we want to make sure that one of the NIC ports on our server has access to the internet. So we would just want to plug in an ethernet cable. Uh, we can either plug the other end of that ethernet cable into a switch that has internet access, or we can just plug it in directly to the network. Ours is going to plug into a switch that's also set up in a VLAN, but you don't have to do it this way. This is just how we have our lab set up, and that's how we're going to give our server internet access. Because we can't use that dedicated iDRAC port, we're going to have to use the NIC port so we can get all of our iDRAC traffic to the server. So once we have everything physically connected, we want to go ahead and set our iDRAC IP address so then we can gain access to the iDRAC web interface. So you want to go back to system setup, and then you want to go to iDRAC settings, and then you want to scroll down to network. So inside of here, at the very top of the screen, it's going to say NIC selection. We have it set to LOM1. This is basically going to allow us to use our NIC port 1, so we can share that traffic with iDRAC, and then we can use NIC port 1 so we can actually connect to the iDRAC web interface. But now what we want to do is we want to scroll down to where it says IPv4 settings. And we're going to set a static IP address. We're going to have an IP video where we're going to show you how to configure an IP address statically and via DHCP. So go ahead and stay tuned for later in the series and you'll be able to see how to do that. But we're going to go ahead and put in our static IP address as well as our static gateway. And then we're going to go ahead and keep our static subnet mask the same. Now we're going to put in our static preferred DNS server. And then our static alternate DNS server. Once we have all of this information configured, we are now ready to connect to the iDRAC web interface. So we can just back out of this menu right here and save our changes. 
and then we can press OK. So now what we want to do is that we want to log on to a computer that is connected to the same network that our server is connected to. And we're going to use this computer so we can log into the iDRAC web interface. So the first thing you want to do is open up any web browser of your choice. And at the search bar, you want to go ahead and type in the IP address that we set for iDRAC. Once we've typed that in, we can just go ahead and press enter. And you may get this error screen, so you just want to click on advanced right here and then click continue so we can go ahead and bypass it. There's nothing to worry about. We know that this is going to be a safe connection. And then in here, we're going to have to log in. So the default login information for the username, it's going to be root. And then the password is going to be Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N. And you can see it right here. So once we have that information, we can click on submit. It's going to verify our credentials. And then here, it'll ask us if we want to change the default password or keep the default password. I recommend changing this for security purposes, but we're just going to keep it for simplicity reasons. So look at this. We have successfully logged into the iDRAC web interface. We'll just give it a second to finish loading. And then now we can actually go ahead and upgrade our license. So on the left-hand side of the screen, there's going to be a tab that says licenses. And then we want to click on this drop down and then click import. And we want to go ahead and choose the file. We're going to navigate to our downloads and you can see that we have our enterprise license file right here. So we want to click on that and then we can click apply. And this is automatically going to upgrade our license. So we can go ahead and click OK. Next thing I want to do is log out and then log back in so we can actually make this change happen. And as you can see at the very top, it says enterprise. So we have successfully upgraded our license. So we're just going to go ahead and finish logging in. We'll keep that default password and then click continue. And there we have it. We have successfully upgraded our iDRAC Express license to an enterprise license. Very simple. And as you can see on the right side here, we have access to our virtual console, which is, like I said, a pretty neat tool because we can remotely access our server without having to physically be there. We just got to make sure that we get a connection to this network and we can access that server. So that's a super cool benefit of this enterprise license. So now I'm going to show you how to use that dedicated iDRAC port, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. So we just want to go ahead and boot back up our server, or if you already have it on, go back to the server and then go to System Setup, and then iDRAC Settings. And like you see right here, we're just going to check it again. It says Enterprise on our server. We go to the Network Settings, where it says NIC Selection. Originally, we had LOM1. We want to scroll up and click on Dedicated. And as you can see, it says iDRAC Enterprise Only. So if we go ahead and move our Ethernet cable to that dedicated iDRAC port, we're still going to have access to the iDRAC web interface. Like I said, this is how you upgrade your Express license to an Enterprise license. If you found this video, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, whether that's Dell, HP, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com.